the Jews have suffered racist anti-Semitism down the ages in many, many European countries, including our own. Uh, they were subject to regular uh, discrimination at best and pogrom and murder at most. That's undoubtedly true. The one place in the entire world that Jews were neither discriminated against nor subject to pogrom was the Muslim world. In fact, so much was that the case that when Christianity came back to power in Spain, in Andalusia, in the um, western extent of the Islamic Empire, when the Muslims left, the Jews left with them because they feared the Christian anti-Semitism which would be unleashed uh, in the wake of the departure of the Islamic civilization in the West. That's why uh, so many Jews are to be found even today and were to be found in profusion before the creation of the State of Israel in countries like Morocco and along the North African coast because under the protection of the Muslims the Jews left Europe and went to live in North Africa. The Palestine that was wiped off the map when Britain granted you somebody else's country had Jews living side by side with Christians and Muslims for century upon century without the slightest trace of discrimination or violence or pogrom. So, what's happened is that Christian anti-Semitism in Europe, which massacred six million Jews in the greatest crime in human history, was paid for not by the Christian countries of Europe that either practiced or turned a blind eye to that anti-Semitism, but was paid by the very people who were completely innocent of that Holocaust. It was long before the Holocaust that Britain stepped in. Britain stepped in in 1917 with the Balfour Declaration made by the British uh, Minister Balfour on our behalf to a group of atheistic Zionist Jews. I make the point about atheism because it's now claimed that this is some biblical land right as if God was an estate agent. The men to whom Israel was promised were atheistic Jews. They were not only not speaking for all Jews, they represented at that time in 1917 a tiny proportion of the world's Jews. Most of the world's Jews supported communist or socialist parties and ideas at that time. The Zionists represented a tiny sliver of Jewish opinion at that time. Yet Balfour promised them the land which belonged to a third people without consulting either the British or the world's Jews and least of all consulting the Palestinians.